Hello everyone, today I'll be conducting an independent review of the Canon FD 50mm f3.5 macro lens. The build quality of the lens is high, featuring a mostly metal body with a rubberized focusing grip. The rear features the classic FD breech lock mount with all of its mechanical baggage. As a 1-to-1 -one -one macro lens, it's designed to get extreme close-ups of your subject, as demonstrated here. The lens has a focus range between 23cm and infinity, covering a massive 340 degrees focus throw. The elements extend from the lens, protruding about 25mm farther when fully extended. The aperture control ring turns smoothly with half and full stop notches, which click rather satisfyingly. I'm testing the lens on an APS-C sensor, so I'll need an adapter to correct the flange distance and mount. This FD to X mount adapter runs about 20 US dollars, but can be used with any FD mount glass. A worthwhile investment. Much like aligning the lens mount on a DSLR or mirrorless camera, the adapter is mounted onto the rear of the lens by aligning the red dots and turning the breech lock. This allows for manual control of the aperture during operation. You'll notice I've taped the inside edge of my lens to avoid reflections when shooting macro near glass or water. The six-blade iris leaves a little bit to be desired in its bokeh, but still performs well. For video users, you'll want to be aware that the lens exhibits substantial focus breathing. It also fares poorly against bright lights as it flares quite noticeably with a significant loss in contrast, but that could be expected with an older vintage lens such as this. Moving on, let's check out the image quality. Again, I'm testing the lens on a 26 megapixel Fuji X-T3. Because this is an APS-C sensor, it's important to note that the Canon 50mm macro might behave differently on a full-frame camera. However, it was designed to fit 35mm film cameras and therefore will cover a full-frame sensor. Straight from f3.5, the lens displays excellent sharpness and good contrast in the middle of the image. In the corners, the lens is sharp as well, but just one stop down to f5.6 increases contrast and sharpness quite noticeably. Stopping down to f8 adds just a touch more sharpness. Around f11, the physical effects of diffraction start to kick in, and the image begins to get softer before breaking down at f22. Overall, the lens displays high contrast and excellent sharpness, all with no visible chromatic aberration. Next, we move on to close-up image quality. Here, the lens is fairly sharp with decent levels of contrast at f3.5. Stop down to f5.6 for slight improvements, and down to f8 for just a bit more sharpness. At f11, the lens becomes soft, and by f16, the physical effects of diffraction have set in. By f22, the image is quite soft. Close-up image quality is good, but I can say I've noticed a bit of softness when I scan 35mm negatives with this lens. Finally is longitudinal chromatic aberration, or fringing as it is also known. At f3.5, I was astonished to see a nearly complete lack of green and purple fringing, and as you stop down further, it only gets better. This performance is admirable for such an old lens. Overall, the FD 50mm f3.5 macro lens strides with flying colors in its high contrast and excellent sharpness that produces an image quality worthy of remembrance. Its low price compared to modern glass is a great bargain as long as you don't mind working manually. This macro lens is highly recommended.